Uh, this is this is the the main Google page. If you're not logged in with any Google accounts, and you can do Google searches on it. Um, and so you can type in very you know, general things in it. You can type in very specific things. And learning to use Google is, is you know, to, to work best for you is a you know, sort of a, an art of learning what they expect and you know, how to put in the words that will most help you find what it is you're looking for. Um, so we had, for an example of, of a specific thing, we wanted capacitors that sound like, like vacuum tube amplification. Vacuum tube amplification. And as I was typing, you may have noticed that um, uh, Google was giving me suggestions on words that I might want to use there, based in part on, on all the th things that other people have, have looked for. Um, so as I was doing amplification, it was say, do you mean amplifier? So if it doesn't work for amplification, we'll try that, because more people have done that. Um, and so then I hit the enter key, and there's a, a search. Um, make things. So there's only 424,000 results on that topic. Um, and there's a Wikipedia article, uh, which I talked about as, as being the encyclopedia on things. And so uh, talking about um, the sounds of, of, of vacuum tubes. Um, you can, there's somebody who's selling vacuum tubes. A lot about vacuum tube guitar amplifiers, which really is not, what I'm for. okay. Um, so then I'm going to say, take out Google searches that inv include guitar. So I put it in minus guitar. And, okay, so now we're down to 349,000 um, things. And um, I, that's, you know, 349 is a lot of things to search through, and I don't know if that will uh, uh, um, do that. So, um, uh, no, uh, we might think about rewording it. Um, okay. So one other thing, another, another you know, handy tool when you're doing Google searches is if you put quotes around um, a pair of words, it will it will filter it out so that it will only it'll treat that as if it's a single word. Um, so it can be used to really narrow the searches. So I'm I'm going to put uh, quotes around sound like because you know. You know, searches that include the word sound, include the word like, you know, that, that could be lots of different things. But, you know, if it sounds like, um, and if I want to get really specific, I could say it sounds like vacuum tube. So we'll see if that uh, gives us anything. Now there's only six results. We've gotten much, much, much narrower based on saying, you know, the, that, those specific words. And there's a patent for sound quality enhancement. Uh, amplifiers to sound like vacuum tube amplifiers. Um, that might be worth looking for. Um, here's somebody who doesn't like things that sound like vacuum tube amps. <laughs> so that's the person you don't want to talk to. Uh, and um, if you want to make solid state uh, amp sound like a vacuum tube, then use tubes. Oh. <laughs> so that's an example of Google searches and a, a couple of the tools that you can use uh, to, to filter your search um, more specifically. Often, you know, the, the first page has the results that I'm interested in, um, so I don't usually have to apply some of these more sophisticated techniques. But sometimes when you're looking for something very specific, uh, doing things like the quotes, things like um, uh, removing certain uh, topics um, are, are good things. And if you want to learn more about uh, advanced searching on, in Google, you can always say, 
do a Google search on advanced searching Google. And you get 11 and a half million results uh, about uh, how to do it. The, the first of which is from Google telling you advanced search. And so if you want to learn more on that topic, before we move on to maps and directions. So then I'm, I'm going to go up to the address bar. And I happen to know that the, the source that I use for maps uh, is maps.google.com. And um, I typed that in. And then Google said, well, OK, that really translates into you know, a, a different uh, specific address. Um, based on the last thing that I was searching for, but it shows me shows me a map. Um, and we'll, some of the basic things you can do with the map um, is you can shift your area of focus. So right now we're we're in Wheaton. We're seeing the Lincoln Mark area, March area, Marsh area. Um, you know, we can move to the west. And there's Route 59, and you know we can move you know, along the north and do that. And I'm just doing that by dragging and dropping um, from any point in the middle of the, the map. I, I just click down my mouse, and then I slide it, and that slides the map. Um, if we want, I can zoom in or out to look less specifically. So if I want to look you know, more at the general suburban area, I can zoom out. I'm using these uh, buttons here to to click minus makes it shows me the broader picture it zooms out um, and then you know, once that's there you can still move around in, in the same way um, I can look to see what this looks like from the satellite view from up above so I uh, there was a option down here that said satellite and I, I changed that so now we can see um, overlaid the 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 line for, there, there aren't really numbers like that on the on the thing so so some it's the map uh, street number or the the, the um, road numbers uh, overlaid over a satellite picture of of what things look like which is you know Sometimes useful at, at this at, at this view, it's probably not because it it looks big and, and gray. But if we want to look see what the roof of the People's Resource Center looks like, um, you can t type any address that you want to um, look at in there. And I started to type 201, and they they suggested you know that the most likely places I'm looking for, and it turns out that somebody on this computer has probably looked for. People's Resource Center in Naperville, in uh, Wheaton before. So I can click on that and it will zoom in and it will show me, uh, it, it popped up a, a couple of, of things. Uh, if I wanted to get directions to it, which is very useful, it will show that in a little bit. Um, at, or we can explore nearby, we can look at a street view, see if we were outside here, what it would look like. Um, and so it's showing us because Google sends cars out in all the neighborhoods, all over everywhere, and takes pictures at particular times. And you can see what things look like. Um, so this is the view from some angle. If you want, you can spin around. And again, I'm, I'm dragging and dropping to, to look around the street. This is uh, helpful if you're looking for, um, you know, um, a restaurant or something, and you say, okay, well, I, okay, I know this is what the address was. Well, when I'm on the street and I'm looking for it, how do I know I should recognize? What should I look for to recognize it? And you can say, oh, well, there's an Arby's across the street, or, or, or you know, half a block away. Um, so, hey, there used to be a vacant lot there. Um, and so that's um, those are, are useful uh, things 
open Street View. Um, but, um, um, go back to the map view. Um, and then one of the other most useful things um, that I find is uh, for finding directions. So if I want to find directions from, um, say, the People's Resource Center in Westmont, I started to type people, and it said, well, here, here, here's, here's things that we think are most likely for you to search for. And so I, I can see the People's uh, Resource Center Southeast in Westmont. And it shows me a map of the directions. Um, it's showing me a, a couple routes that I could choose. Um, uh, taking uh, Roosevelt Road, um, that would be 22 minutes without traffic, but with the current state of traffic, they say it would be 24 mile, minutes. Um, I could also take Butterfield Road or Ogden. If I click on Butterfield Road, it's going to change the map up here to show the blue one will become Butterfield. Does it change? Yeah, it, it is changing. Okay. It's just in that uh, section up there. Um, if I said, well, I want to take that route, but I really don't want to take um, take it from here, I can, I can fine tune things by looking for one of these dots on, on the map, and I can slide that. I can say, well, I, what I really want to do is go down this route. So that wasn't what they were choosing to show me, but it's the route that I want to take. So you just dragged the line over? Yeah, I, I dragged the little, the, the little dot. Okay. And so if I wanted to you know, go by way of Elmhurst here, I could drag this up here. And that would not be very efficient. It would take much longer to get there. But uh, so then I, I can do that. And then one, once I let go, it says, OK, that's the. That's the route. And then if you, if you said, oh, I, uh, I didn't want to do that, I can remove what I, what I changed. Where it, uh, somehow click to remove. Oh, OK. I, I, I should just click it to remove it. Um, so the, those are useful uh, things to do. You can also say, but I don't want to go from Westmont to here. I want to go from here to Westmont. Um, now I could just you know take all this stuff and I could cut it and paste it or move it around or type it all in from scratch, but they say well, often you want to just reverse your directions. So that's what these two arrows pointing up and down will do. And now I know from Westmont to here. I'm sorry, from here here to Westmont. Um, say so, okay, well that's great, but. Um, I, I want to stop somewhere on the way. Um, so then there's a, a little plus here, which I can you click to add a destination. In general, um, you know, is with many things in Windows, um, a lot of the, the better web tools, if you, if you hover over something to say, well, what's this going to do? It will give you a hint about what's going to happen. So I saw the plus, and it tells me that will add a destination. Well, that's great. Now, let's say I want to go to um, Mariano's. Um, yeah, not the one on Halstead. Uh, the one on Main Street in Wheaton. OK, so and then it added that to the end, which would be really inefficient, because I'd go down there, and then I'd come back. But I really want to do that on the way. So then I just uh, go over here. I can drag this up and say, from where I, where I am now, I want to go to Mariano's, and then I want to go to uh, People's Resource Center Southeast. So now, instead of taking 45 minutes, it only takes 25 minutes, which makes more sense. Um, once you I. You can put three or more addresses? You can put three or more. You can put oh. a whole list of them. Okay. You can plan your, your itinerary for the day. Um, and then, if you wanted, you can print it. Um, more likely, you might want to print the details if you want to say the, the okay, so, so all right, that's what I want to do. But 
you know, I don't know how to get there, because if I knew how to get there, I wouldn't have been using Google Maps. Um, so if I click on details, it's going to show me step by step from when I leave here, I'm going to head south on Naperville Road. Now, right now, there's more than fits on here, so they put a little scroll bar up here. So I'm going to drag that down. Um, so I start by heading south on Naperville Road, and I go for 0.4 miles. And then I'll turn right on Roosevelt, and then take that for 0.2 miles. Then after, and then I'll turn right at the cross street onto Main Street, and then I'll turn turn right, and then Mariano's will be on the right. And then, from there, so that'll, that will take three minutes, and it's about 0.6 miles. Um, and then I'm at Mariano's, and then it tells me how to get from Mariano's to um, PRC Southeast. Um, here's a summary of the uh, continue on, on, on this and, and do all this good stuff. Um, if I want to see it in more details, I can click on this little V. Um, it, it's, it's got a whole bunch of steps that are collapsed. If I see instructions like that, that may be great if I'm, if I'm familiar with, oh, okay, I get on uh, uh, Roosevelt and get on 88 and then I get off at Midwest Road. Okay, that's fine. I don't need to know all the details of how long I go here and how long I do that. But if I want the details, I can get them by clicking on this. And then it'll go through and tell me you know, each of the things. It tells me about uh, tolls. It tells you know, keep Where did you click for the details again? That little arrow up there? Um, there was, there? yeah, this, this is either a a V if it's collapsed, or a reverse V if it's okay. if it's expanded, and you can t t toggle back and forth between those. And then if you have all that, and you say, "Well, I want to print this," there's a little print icon up at the top, and you can say, "Print it with the maps, or print just the text instructions." So that's an overview of Google Maps. There's, as with any of these things, there's a lot more you can do with them. But uh, I'm hopefully giving enough to, to get started and say, hey, wow, that's, that's neat. I can use that. I'll go use it and explore it and learn more. So in, in the slide presentation, I talked about <coughs> um, for an alternative um, or an internet equivalent for phone books uh, is 411.com. Um, so if you're, and this is more of uh, looking things up in the white pages. Um, so if you know somebody's name um, and you want to look them up in Naperville, how many John Smiths? Um, we can do a search, and it found uh, two exact matches for John Smith, because most John Smiths apparently use their middle initial, <laughs> and uh, 98 other possible matches. So that, that's a way of, find, of, of doing a white page uh, lookup. For yellow pages, um, you're, you're dealing more with businesses, and in which case, I would typically just use Google. And there are um, web the websites out there. So yeah, just look, put in the, the name of the place. Um, let me start with Google, that, the, the main page. Um, and so if I wanted to look for, um, is, is there a business that you can, you want to? Uh, just starting with a, a Google Cakewalk Chicago, and they have a website, Cakewalk Chicago. Okay. And then if their phone number is up up here, okay. if if you if you want to call them, or if you want to get inf information about them, 
that are often there. Um, and this is good to know about the white pages. I didn't know about this. <laughs> um, and yeah, you can also just Google somebody's name. Um, okay. If I look for John Smith, it's not going to necessarily focus on phone numbers and addresses. Um, so yeah, there's a yellowpages.com as well. Um, is is a website if you if you wanted to do something that was more similar. And so if we look for John Smith in yellowpages.com in Naperville, and that looks more like a phone directory, um, and it shows you the, the the names and the addresses and the phone number, um, and then you can get directions to the address. And sometimes if there's more info, I clicked on that. Um, to, to some businesses about uh, some details about the business, and some places will will post things um, or not. You can often find the hours of businesses, um, but uh, on on Google searches. So so yellow pages is is a way of doing that of narrowing it if you're specifically looking for um, the address or or phone number, um, or you could also just uh, Put in address or phone number in your Google search, and that will that'll help narrow it also. Okay. Um, and the other topic that uh, was was asked was on uh, translation. And I think I mentioned a couple uh, translation translation uh, things. There's uh, Babelfish, and there's also um, Google tra Translate. Um, Google Translate is very useful for translating web pages. Um, as well as a phrase that you want to have, but often, you know, if you're if you're doing uh, looking for a specific topic, um, you know, oh, if there's somebody who's who's discussed uh, capacitors that sound like vacuum tubes in German, well, that, that that's great, but I don't read German. Well, um, you can uh, if if you do a Google search and it finds a page that's in in a foreign language, it will often off, offer to translate for you. So, um, so I'm just picking a relatively random uh, Google search based uh, in part on my uh, last name, and I noticed that it the the results was um, Spiegel.de, which um, websites have have addresses, their 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 domains. We're from most familiar with things that uh, end with .com as a commercial website. Um, and those, that's primarily what you'll find in, in the United States uh, for commercial websites. We'll use .com. Um, nonprofit organizations will use .org, like peoplesrc.org. Um, educational institutions will use .edu. In other countries, uh, they organize things a little bit differently. And in many cases, they'll be primarily organized by what country is it from. And so for... Um, uh, uh, Canada, if you want to go to Amazon's website in Canada, it's not going to be Amazon.com, it's going to be Amazon.ca for Canada. Um, if you want to go to Amazon site in uh, Britain, it's going to be in the UK, so it's got .co.uk. So the extensions, the things that come at, at the at the uh, end of the domain for the the website help often I identify what uh, country you're you're looking at. Uh, and in this case, it was uh, it was .de, which um, I assume may have been Deutschland. And I see the German this this page in German. And I don't see Google. Oh, okay. So over here, uh, I was looking for it and I didn't see it. It, Google's asking, would you like to translate this page? And it's giving me some other options. Um, and so I say translate and whoosh. So, so well, this was, b before I get into the trend, before I got into specifically translating what you're typing, um, I was showing the ability to translate a, a, a web pages from other um, things. So in this case, I went to a German web page and Google offered, would you like to translate this? And I said yes, and it converted this from German oh. into English. 
the next thing I'm going to do is to look at Google Translate. Um, and this is nice and big. That's what I like to see. And so you can, um, if, you, if you want to type in text, if you have something that you want to translate, um, you can type it in and con convert it to another language. If you want, um, you can choose what language you're, you're going from and what language you're going to. Or you can also let Google try to figure out what language it is that you are going from. So it, here it gives me the option to detect the language and then translate it to English. So if I see something and I don't even know what language it is, um, I, can, I can ask, well, I don't know what, what language it is or what it means, but I'd like to know what it means. And so I can, I can do that. Um, I'm going to go to another tab here. And um, let's uh, um, hmm. Looking for something in a foreign language that. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes uh, somebody gives yeah. me a box of tea. Mm. It's Lithuanian tea, and I have no clue what's in there. Ah. And I like to know because I have allergies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just one well. time I took something and I wasn't able to breathe. So okay. That's so. the reason I'm asking. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just good to know. Yeah, and so so yeah, this was uh, I just did. I said Google Translate. And it took me to, to the Google uh, Translate page. Um, so, yeah, that'll help um, us, that Google Translate again. Um, so I started to type, and it figured out, well, what you're typing is in Spanish, and what it means is my brother is long, which isn't a particularly good uh, so it automatically translates mm -hmm. in the other way. That's yes. And if you, if you copied something in, it would paste it. Um, Google Translate. Okay. Um, and if you know what language, you know, if you know it's uh, Lithuanian. And you, if you don't? You, you could go like this, but you, uh, you could choose it. But otherwise, you can say um, detect language. Oh, okay. So that's what... It, right now, it's with Spanish detected, but uh, um, okay. So yeah, depending on what what letters you put in there, it's going to do all kinds of searches to figure out what language it likely is. Um, you know, and if you only have a couple letters, that's not going to be meaningful. But um, you know. And sometimes, if it if it can't figure something out, it'll just say, "Oh, it's the same word." Um, I started to type some letters, and it said, uh, "It's Spanish." Wait, no, it's something. Wait, it's it's Finnish, but I gave it. It it says, "Well, the English equivalent of that is the same as what I typed in," because that's not really a Finnish word, but. Uh, Finish is, is, is not very good. I, I mean, I can speak it better than I can write it, but <laughs> I don't speak it very well. Um, so that well, some of the things that, that you can do with, yeah. with translation. Thank it's you. one o'clock. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Hope, hopefully, you uh, you learned some useful things.